go. Let's hit that live button. <laughs> What's good, everybody? Orlando, we got to start it off the right way. What episode are we on? We are number 137. 137. Let's clap it up. Let's we go, got my go, guy, Doreen go. Delevante, in let's the building. Let's go! I think it's super important that not only do we have all the antics that go on up here, but I think it's super important that we have great conversations, first and foremost. Shout out, Queen, in the building. Let's What's go. up, y'all? What's up? So, for the people that don't know who you are, Mr. Delavante, because I have to say his name a million times just so you know, because it's like the perfect name. Uh, it's a perfect name. I Rain appreciate you. Thank you very much. Mr. Delavante, let the people know who you are. Uh, cool. So, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Doreen Delavante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer laws. I also teach credit repair business owners how to scale their credit repair business to make an extra six figures per year using four key strategies, lead generation, lead conversion, client ascension, and continuity. I'm also the president and CEO of the Credit Summit, the only one of its kind for us that is geared towards the consumer and the credit repair business owner in learning how to erase credit worries to teach consumers how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit, reclaim their life, reclaim their freedom, and just let us get on the, 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 the journey of financial freedom where we start changing zip codes from those 500 credit score zip codes to 700 and 800 zip codes. Okay. And what, what got you into this game? Um, well, first of all, I'm not from the U.S. I okay. wasn't born here. I was born in Jamaica. I've only been living here 13 years. And when I came here, I knew nothing about credit. I didn't know what it was, anything like that. And I was just upset that a number could control where I live, what I got access to, and the people that I was around. And I kept getting denied for everything. And when I bought my first car, which was a used 2007 Nissan Altima, it had 75,000 miles on it. My and first car was a 2010 Nissan Altima. <laughs> yeah. and the crazy, it might have been a 2007. The, the crazy thing about it is I was paying 18.9% interest rate on it. But you see, what I didn't know is that there's a thing called usury law. Each state has it. And in New York, it's 16%. And I was paying 18%. And I never knew that I was a victim of subprime lending and that I was being taken advantage of. So there's a lot of things where credit... So let me get this straight real quick. So usury law? Yeah. The state of Florida, it's 18%. And in the state of New York, it's 16? 16. Each state has their own. My Nissan Altima was 24.99. Yeah, so you were paying in excess. It's cri That's criminal. Wow. To pay over yes. the amount? So the usury law, the state caps the maximum allowable interest. Each state has their own, right? So New York is 16%. So let's use Florida because we're here. It's, it's 18%. Anything over 18% is, a, is criminal. So, but people don't know. And when they do get approved for these subprime lending and they're paying 25 and 30%, they're not even know that they can reclaim the excess of that usury law. And either one, have them cut back a check to you for the excess or have them put it towards the principal. It's a lot of stuff a lot of people don't know. How so, does uh, someone go about doing that? So do you call? Is there... We don't call because mm -hmm. why? They can always say we, lo we lost the recording. Everything in writing. We want to send out mail. We're going to get it notarized so we got a witness and we're sending it certified mail green return receipt so we know that they got it. Someone had to sign for it. So in the event that we have to take legal action or go to court, we have the documentation. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Now, is there anything that people can do if they are if, if the loan was already terminated, the, they already got the car and they own it outright? So in th that you'd have to speak to an attorney about in terms of going back after them. But if you've paid, and this is no way, shape, or form, ladies and gentlemen, any financial advice, but I'm only telling you all what I've done, Right. So if you've paid in excess, what I did was I made letters and I sent my consumer law letters to reclaim the excess and I had a check that was cut back to me and being active duty. So if anyone right now that's listening or hearing my voice and you're active duty, there's another law called the SCRA and it protects active duty military. So it caps you at 6%. Anything over 6%, 
you can either get a check cut to you or have it redirected to the principal. But these are things that people don't know. And like they said in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed because of a lack of information. And if that is true, it also means the opposite is true. If my people are empowered with information, there will be no destruction. Mm. Wow, that, that's... I know, it's so a long like, answer to I your mean, question, my, right? Well, my, my <laughs> mind is blown because I know so many people right off the jump that have been victims of this. Yeah, me that, too. That don't know any better. And I feel like, that, you know, that's why I feel like it's important for us to have this conversation and for the fans of our show and your show to be able to consume this information is to be able to change their lives for the better. So it's one of the whole reason. I'm, I'm going to get to that right now. It's one of the whole reasons why I created the Credit Summit. There is no, first of all, they don't teach you this in school. You're not going to learn this in school. That's number one. The second thing y'all need to comprehend is that bad credit is the biggest business in America. The most money is made from people with bad credit. Because if you got an 800, right, you're going to get, what, between 2 and 5%, and they know you're going to pay it off. But with a person with bad credit, you're getting double-digit interest rate off the rip, right? If you miss a payment, they can hike the interest rate up. Um, the next thing is... In the finance charge, there's a finance charge, 15 U.S.C. 1605, and there's an insurance policy built into the finance charge that protects the lender in the event the obligor defaults. So there's an insurance policy that they're cashing in. Then they sell it to collections. They got paid again. Then they hit it with a charge off. They got paid five times off of somebody with bad credit. So why... Why wouldn't they want to get paid five times versus one time? Bad credit is the biggest business. You had something, bro? You answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, what, what, like, what about? So, your upbringing for the people again that don't know who you are, because a lot of lo uh, what we love to do here mm -hmm. is to be able to highlight people and who they truly are. Mm -hmm. So, you come from Jamaica. Yep. Parents yep. there. How was life over there? So I, mean, I didn't grow up with money. I didn't grow up rich. Uh, none of that stuff, right? Um, in Jamaica, you either have your money or you don't. The credit system that is here, y see, y'all don't know over here, man, and I keep telling people this. America has a thing called credit. It does not exist everywhere else. This is a thing that you can use if you are poor to become extremely rich. It, is, it does not exist in other places. Jamaica is one of them. Right? So coming over here, I had to learn this. I came here in 2010, bro. Right? I had to learn all of this. And through credit, I became financially free. Dude, I am mentally unemployable. Mm. So, so, up, so coming up over there with your parents, mm -hmm. what made you that way? What, what turned you into this machine that you are today? So I've always believed in myself. That's, that's number one. Um, I don't like doing things everybody do. For some reason, just even when I was a child, it never sit well with me. And I was one of those why kids. I asked why for everything. You know, you got some kid that just follow the instructions and you got those that, but why I was that kid. So I needed, from an early age, I needed to know why I'm doing something. So that, that, that why that I couldn't get answers to evolve into a bigger purpose, a purpose that I didn't even know that I had at a younger age, which I would be impacting millions of people with finance, their credit. I didn't know this, but I've always had such a belief in myself. Like in Jamaica, before I left, dude, I was going to go to med school, right? And there's five kids. And I made a decision that, all right, if I go to med school, I'm going to exhaust everything my mom had. Dude, I got two younger sisters, right? And um, I made a decision at 19 years old. I'm going to leave the country that I knew and everything that I knew to come to a whole new country with no family to make it. That's how much I believed in me. And a, th a thing I want to say is that my mom loves me to death. She's my number one fan. My mom was like, son, what are you doing? Come back home. But you see, we can't expect all the time for people to see our vision. It wasn't given to them. And as much as I love my mom and my mom loves me, in her mind, yo, her son's going to a brand new country with no family. But in my mind is it has to work or it has to work. I'm going to figure it out. Right. And a, a, a big killer of dreams is when we introduce it to a small mind. Mm. 
And a lot of us in relationships, whether with family, spouses, or whatever, like some of us, we're sleeping with the enemy. And we think these people mean, we, we, we think they mean us well, but we can't expect other people to move to the beat of your drum. Mm -hmm. That rhythm is in your head, bro. And if you try and you force people to see your vision, nine times out of ten, it doesn't end well. So you know and you'll see, you all probably know people too, that they have great ideas. And because they introduce it to someone that could not see their vision, that person said, who do you think you are? You're going to make the Donzo Project. Who, who do you think you are? Why do you think people are going to listen to you? And then that voice stifled a project that can impact millions. You know where the richest place on earth is? Where is that? I want you all to take a guess. Dubai? All right, that's one. Yeah, that's, that's where I would have gone is Dubai. But if you're, if you're at Dubai, I'll go to Saudi Arabia. What you got? I was going to try Japan. The cemetery. Oof. Do you know the amount of dreams, the amount of songs, the amount of videos, books, intellectual properties that died with people because they brought their dreams to a small mind? And that person that they thought that loved them killed that dream and it was never birthed. The cemetery is one of the richest places on earth. There's so many things that could have been brought that was never brought. It got stifled. And that's deep because, you know, that, that is the case with a lot of relationships these days. Um, and again, when I say relationships, I want people to truly understand that I'm talking about business relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about the family relationships. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the spouses. When you're coming to somebody with a dream, it's rare that they can... And, it, you know, a lot of the times it's really not even their fault. They lack the education. Mm -hmm. So when they're speaking to you, it's not even like they're trying to kill your dream. It's they don't understand they're doing it. They look at you and, and you have this great idea. But for them, that's terrifying, especially if they're a spouse. You know, like, oh, my God, you're going to if you do this, all of our money is gone. And then what? That's terrifying. You remember for a lot of people. what Jay-Z said when he was um, doing his album? And his uncle was projecting his fear in him about what he could and couldn't do. But Jay believed in him so much. Dude's a whole billionaire now. Multi-billionaire. When, when do we become so selfish that it's okay to be selfish, to focus on you? We want to help everybody going up. Dude. If you're going up a ladder and you're pulling everybody up, you will never reach. Somebody got to go up top, tie a rope, and throw it back down. And along the way, along the way to success, see, there's going to be so many people that's trying to pull you down, even your own family. And you know what's crazy? People that you knew and grew up with, they're going to say, oh, I remember when you used to do this. Yeah, you knew me when I was running around barefoot. You knew me when I was doing crazy stuff. That's not what I'm doing anymore. Why are you trying to remind me about that? Dude, I've worked so hard to leave that life. So if all you can do is think about the past, you have no business into my future. Mm. See, because we got a thing called imagination. And thinking is the hardest thing most people never do. And with imagination, it's a gift from God that we got where we can visualize a future, go to that future, come back to the present and build what we need to attain that future. But because of programming, go to school, get a job, join the 40-40-40 club, 40 hours a week for 40 years and 40% of pension. How, how does that even make sense? So I want to ask you a question. What is some advice that you would tell someone, like, for instance, they wake up today and they're very unhappy with their job, just the way that they're living. And what is some advice that you will tell them? Like, would you tell them to quit their job and just continue on, like, tr trying to start a business? Like, how would that go, like, for you? Well, it's good that you're uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable and you're upset about your, your current life, it means that something is there for you to do. There's a purpose for you. People got to find your purpose. And I wouldn't say quit your job. Do your job to the best of your ability. But the same way you were investing eight hours into somebody else's business, when that job is finished, 
Are you going home to invest that same type of energy in yourself? Use the funds from your nine to five to fund the freedom for the rest of your life. That's my advice. And I believe I, I, I watched a, a pretty dope clip the other day. It was of Sauce Walker. You know, when we're chasing after a dream, when you're chasing after anything in life, you know, you have to have laser like focus into that. And a lot of the times, you know, we're being accused of being selfish. It's cool. When we're doing that. It's but okay. It's, it's, it is okay. It is to okay. Be selfish in those it is moments. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because how else will you be able to throw that rope down if you weren't selfish for yourself in the moment to even climb up that ladder in the first place? Because you'll be on the same playing field as everybody else. You can't lift anybody up. And then once you get them up to the next level, you got to go climb again. And then you'll throw the rope down again. And then eventually you'll have the, the, all, everybody aligned with you. The people that you need to be aligned mm -hmm. with you will be aligned with you. Mm -hmm. And they'll understand exactly what it was that you were doing. And they'll judge you a lot differently. Because we're all judged. You know, entrepreneurs are judged the most in the harshest. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, all you do is think about yourself. You know, like if, if you're broke with them mm -hmm. and you lend them a dollar, amazing. Best person in the world. Mm -hmm. If you're making a lot more money than them and you give them a thousand, you're a scumbag. Now it becomes a problem. Yeah. You know what's crazy? People are cool when you're broke with them. They'll, they'll do everything with you. But you see the minute you start to educate yourself and leave that circle. Oh, you're too good for us. You don't hang around anymore. You are an average of the five people that you're around. So if that is true... Why would I want, why on God's earth would I want to hang around broke people to be the next broke one? Let me go find people that are millionaires and multi-millionaires. Because if that is true and I hang around these millionaires, guess what I'm going to learn? How to make millions. <coughs> so why not audit our circle? It's okay to let people go. Let them go. Not everyone you start with, you're going to finish it. We got to be comfortable in letting people go. People are seasonal. They belong in your life for a season. Our issue is that we think that we can bring everybody with us. No, it doesn't work. Not everyone is suited for the journey. If that was the case, everybody would have been lawyers and doctors. They're not... Many are called, but few are chosen. The question is, are you going to spend your time and plant your roots in an environment not conducive to your growth, like an acorn on a windowsill? Or are you going to have that oak tree inside of you planted in a forest so that oak tree can grow? You can be on the windowsill, that oak tree will be trapped in you forever. Or you can take that same acorn, go to the forest and plant it so you can grow into your greatness. Leave people alone, man. Especially if they are negative. Oh, my God. Leave negative people alone. I love you, but I'm going to love you from a distance. Mm. People are energy vampires. They will drain your energy. And they'll take and they'll take. They'll take everything from you. But then you become an empty vessel. You cannot pour from an empty vessel. And when you give everything, who pours back into you? Who's going to pour back into you? Facts. If you're not in masterminds, mentorship, if you're not working on your self-development, if you're not working on your credit, starting businesses, Learning how to become financially free. When you've given your all, who pours back into you? So I have a yeah, question. Right. Can you walk me through your process when you came over here to the United States? Like, what was going on through your mind? What jobs did you get to start where you are? Like, what advice was you telling yourself to keep going? Like, how did that start? All right. So for self-motivation, um, I've never had an issue here ever since I was a kid. Um... I was just that kid that was just, I was just motivated. God gave it to me. I accept it abundantly, right? And 
coming here, my first job here was at Dairy Queen. I was making like $7.30 an hour, dude. I was killing it. Is Dairy it. Queen everywhere in the United States? I don't even know, but I Where? went to New Hampshire. I, okay, okay. When I first yeah. moved here, I was in New Hampshire. I've never been that cold in my whole life. Yeah, yeah. It's my first <laughs> time my bones were ever cold. Yeah. Dude, that cold hit different. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I know, Bruh. The, pain. I know the pain. Bruh. So I'm at Dairy Queen making $7.30 an hour. I thought I was killing it because my mindset was still Jamaican, right? So for every dollar here at the time, it was 120 Jamaican dollars. Mm. So the calculation was not in U.S. is what I was making back home because that's the calculation I was using. So I thought I was killing it. And then... Being in New Hampshire for two years, I didn't move to New York. I got a hold of my godfather, and uh, I told him that I w I, I'm, I'm leaving everything behind in Jamaica, and I want to start here. No family, just my godfather, right? Went there, um, stayed there for, I believe, less than a year. Um, we got into it. Um, I wanted to go out. He had kids, and he's like, if I let you go out, the kids will start thinking they can go out too, so I'm not going to disrespect nobody in their home. So I moved out, went to Mount Vernon to live. A friend of mine, shout out to Chris. His uncle had a house. Dude, I went into a one, um, a one room, not a one bedroom. I was sharing the room. All I had was a, a, a ear mattress, bro, right? And, and during that time, I got a job at Five Guys. I was the best fry shaker in that motherfucker, <laughs> right? I was shaking them basket 19 times, crispy golden fries. Yeah. But then I was making $8.50 an hour, right? And I thought I was killing it. But it's, it's the people that I was around at that time. I thought that, you know, I was doing good. It just goes to show the type of people that you hang around is important to your growth. So everybody around me was making five and what well, they were making like eight and nine and ten dollars an hour. And you could go out, you could pool together and maybe buy a bottle if, right? And and do stuff like that, barely go out. But you know what? That season was essential to the person that I became. So um along the lines of that now, 2012. No, I joined the military because I, I joined the military. What uh, branch? Army, Army okay. National Guard. So I wanted to get my citizenship. So I joined the military, got my citizenship. And the military has been wonderful because now I was into their program. And, and this is what a lot of people don't comprehend, the power of affirmation. There is no other organization on the planet that I know that takes people from all different walks of life. And in eight weeks, everyone thinks the exact same way. Dude, we're waking up at 4.30 in the morning. We're going on a run. We're singing. The Army is great. The United States is great. This is what we're going to do for our country every morning for eight weeks. Affirmation is one of the most powerful things ever created. Because what you are doing with affirmations, you are rewiring your mindset. I'm a product of that for the military. So after eight weeks, I was walking straight. I was making right turns, making left turns. I was so serious, dude. I was programmed. Everybody that comes out of boot camp, they're programmed because of affirmation. It's nothing crazy that they do to you there. It's a, they instill a different mindset into you. But how do you do that? Just like any computer, you have to wipe whatever was there out first. That's why these drill sergeants, are they look so crazy. They got to break old beliefs, break it all the way down, and rebuild what they want. A mean, lean, killing machine. That's it. You say go right, go right. Go left, go left. Right? So doing that now for a few years, um, I, I started going back to this credit stuff. Um, I still got denied for an apartment. I couldn't get approved for an apartment. And I, I got so frustrated because I couldn't get approved for anything, right? So now, all right, Doreen, maybe you need to start taking this credit stuff more serious. So I started looking into it. Now, being in the 404040 Club, I was getting a job with the state, right, um, for hazmat protection. Um, and for some, I'm telling you, like, sometimes things happen to us and we get so upset not knowing that we got to go through some stuff to get through our stuff. 
And, and, and it's just funny how, you know, God has things in place for you. And you can't see around corners, right? And I was so upset, man, so upset because now I, the active duty job that I had, I put in my two-week notice because I was getting a job with the city, right? I was fully in the 404040 club, right? That's what I thought. And then two weeks before I started, they... They, I put in the notice, and then a week after, they said that the job is no longer available. Wow. Wow. Mind you, I trained my replacement. So there's no going back because they already hired someone, right? And my supervisor at the time, well, I wouldn't say supervisor, but he was the, the guy that was in charge of the, the active duty program that I was on. And he said, yo, um, I can keep you on till December. It's the holidays. Uh, it's family. I know this. I, I'm gonna keep you on to December, but after December, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's cool. I got an extra. I think it was 45 days, bro. Right? I was so angry, bro. I was in such a dark place because all I knew was being, be, for the last like five years, is being active duty, and I got used to that paycheck, that that six thousand dollars a month. I, no, all of that is gone. So I'm so angry, bro. I go to the barber shop. One of my barber was talking. He said, yo, you know, I just got this book for my niece. Um, the book is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, what kind of dumbass book is that? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> Somebody got two dads. I was just angry. Yeah. I was. Robert and Kiyosaki, yeah, Robert bro, I'm telling you. So with my curious mind, now I need to know what this Rich Dad, Poor Dad is about. <laughs> so I go on YouTube on my drive home. And I said, um, Rich Dad Poor Dad audiobook. It came up. Dude, my whole life flashed before my eyes. My whole life changed. Shout out to Robert. Right? And then I had to listen to that book the entire night. And after that, I listened it six times. It's the first book I ever read front to back. Rich Dad Poor Dad. And right after that, Napoleon Hill Think and grow rich. Mm. My life was forever changed. Those might be like right around my first two as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah. First two books. I was forced into Rich Dad, Poor Dad, though. Really? Yeah, I was forced to learn that one. It whether we are forced or whether it just dropped in our laps, yeah. for some reason, the, e the effect of that book is astronomical. So then 2020 came around and we had to deploy, and I started reading, bro. I was reading. I read 143 books on my deployment. 140, 143. One of them. Now are these uh, hard hardcover? Or oh yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a um, Kindle type of dude. I want the pages. Okay. I like feeling the pages. I like writing notes. But I had to go on a journey of self development. It took me two years. Right. On my deployment, I was reading everywhere I went. I had a book with me, and what happened was supervisors, sergeants that was about ranks above me, wanted to write me up for reading. Can you imagine that? Everywhere we see you, you got a book. Is it army related? Dude, I was so committed to my success. I said, send me home. I don't care. Write me up. I don't care. That's how committed I was to my dreams and my goal. And I say this to you that is watching right now. How committed are you to your own success? I'm willing to risk it all, bro. Do you rank me? I don't give a fuck. I don't, that's how committed, because when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then I read Think and Grow Rich, and then Out Within the Devil, it was a wrap. So everything on taxes, credit, um, business, self-development. Dude, I was consuming like four to eight books a month. I wasn't outside like everybody else, fraternizing, working out. Dude, I was locked in my room. I was reading, bro. And it's crazy that some of the same people I went on deployment with, right? They would be like, yo, every time we see you, you're reading. There he goes with another book. You know what happened to those guys now? They are broke. They had to go on a second deployment because they ran out of money. Those sergeants that were wanted me to write me up for, for reading, they're broke. What they make in a year, I can now make in a day. Wow. It's the power of information. 
And if you are not committed to your dreams and your own success, how do you expect somebody else to be? Absolutely. We got to be intentional. Success is not accidental. Yes, it's accidental for some of the people that won the lottery, but we know what happens to them three to five years later. They are right back where they started. The foundation was not there. Everybody wanted it quick. Give me the microwave fix. Without a foundation, the structure will fall. So I had to build my mind, and I learned consumer law. And during this journey, I built out an 800 credit score three times in one year. I leveraged my personal credit to start seven businesses. It all started when I decided to bet on me. So there's people that Oh, that course is too expensive. Oh, I don't want to pay somebody $5,000 for mentorship. Oh, I don't want to do this. But then you fell into the biggest scam. They told you to go to school and get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you paid $50,000, $100,000 to get a degree that you're only making $40,000 a year from. Mind you, taxes ain't even out of that yet. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest scam? And I don't know if y'all are listening to these facts right now. Listen, we need to I'm get, them, get, them, get the clapping. Get the clapping. I'm just going to piggyback off of, off of what you just said. Talk um, to me, Queen. Because I am a HBCU graduate. I graduated from Florida Memorial University. And what I've noticed is that, you know, everyone around me, even myself, we were so excited about graduating and getting this degree and doing this. And then, you know, I got the degree. I started working, you know, I'm 46, almost forty-six, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in debt. Mm -hmm. And then I started working this job. And then I realized, oh, shit. I'm not making enough money to help me pay off my student mm -hmm. loans. Oh shit. I'm not making enough money to help me keep my car. I'm not making enough money to. And I started realizing like, Whoa, is this the biggest scam that I've ever, you know, witnessed now? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with, you know, obviously getting your degree, having your education and doing that. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But what it became an issue was that I felt so, I felt so lost after graduation and I was mm -hmm. like you know what I was working a city job I was working getting good money but it, w it just still wasn't enough mm -hmm. and I got scared and I became like okay what what happens from here and even to this day it's it's still like a scary moment because now you have this degree you still got the forty six thousand dollars in debt mm -hmm. how do you you know obviously creating my own platform building businesses but it's hard to create that when you are not financially there you know what I'm saying? So I just want to get your opinion on that. So abundance starts in the mind, right? And when we, when we comprehend words and the type of words that we use on ourselves, in the beginning was the word, the word was it God, and the word became flesh. There's power in words. And a lot of people who are broke, who are poor, you will notice the words that they use. I cannot do this. Nobody taught. It's a, it's a victimized game mentality that they have, right? Um, I'm not rich. No one is rich. Like, we, we can't afford this. But you see, what I learned from Robert Kiyosaki is when you change the words to how can I, you will notice that you will get different answers. So in your case now, let's say you're 50 grand in student loan debt, barely making it now with a job quote-unquote job, because now I got this great degree, yeah. right, that does nothing but collect <laughs> dust on the wall. Well, the question I would ask myself is this. Well, how can I make more money? See, making more money doesn't mean getting a second job. job. It means what problems. This is what makes people rich. A poor person will think, what job can I get? A rich person say, what problems can I solve? Two totally different mindsets, right? Mm -hmm. One wants a job. One wants to solve other people's problems. So who do you think is going to make the most money? The one that solves the problems. The more problems you solve, the more money you're going to make. Your income is directly proportional to the problems you solve. So if, if, that, is, if that is true, see, we are all self-made, but only one set of people will admit it, rich people. 
poor people are not going to admit the fact that they are poor because of the way they think. They're going to think that they are poor because rich people are greedy. It's not rich people are greedy. Rich people work for what they got. They solve other people's problems and they make a lot of money doing it. So instead of you crying about what somebody else have and thinking that you're entitled to it, how can I increase my streams of income? So this is where you think, what are my skills? Okay, went to school for this four or five or six years, got this degree. What can I do? I can do this, 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 and this. Okay, which set of people have these problems? Okay, I know this person, there's 330 uh, million people in America. 90% of them got bad credit. 65% of them live paycheck to paycheck. Okay, that's a problem that I can solve. Cool. We know we got this amount of people with bankruptcies. We know that this amount of people car got repossessed last year. You see where I'm going with this? Yes. List the problems. So now that we list the problems, which one of these problems can I solve? So you're using your nine to five to pay the bills and stay afloat. But when that nine to five is shut off and you're home, are you developing you to solve people's problem so you can now transition from somebody else's dream to your dream? Mm -hmm. So I would ask, tell me, so what comes to you so natural that you don't have to think about doing it? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. My degree is in communication. So my degree is in television broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone that can literally edit a video like, like this. Okay. However, you're right, because I would say after I graduated, you know, I was doing a lot of PR work. I was just, you know, doing public affairs, assisting and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I was so unhappy in the process. And mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm making other people look good and I should be making myself look good. Mm -hmm. And it became like a shock to me because I was like, I can literally do this for myself and make 10 times the money we go. versus what they were. So. It was like an eye-opening experience for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I started going to work, and I started paying attention to certain things, and I'm just like, okay, let me see if I can do this by myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I started doing side work, saying, okay, I can be doing PR assistance for you, and mm -hmm. just, just to see how far I can get. Yeah. And I've gotten people deals. I've gotten people, obviously, I can't talk about it, but I've gotten mm -hmm. people certain situations that were beneficial. So I said, okay, how could I go about making money from You this? notice what you said, how can I? And the answers came. What if you said, I can't? You think those answers would have came to you? Mm -mm. You had a shift in paradigm. I saw it. And that shift is what made you the person you are right now. <laughs> Boom, there we go. We needed it. <laughs> you know but what else I fear? I fear that a lot of people, when they leave school, just they think it's over. And, and I, I mean that is, and like, you don't need to learn anymore. I, I, I figured out what I need to know. How many people do you know are actually picking up books? Not too many. Dude, I buy 10 to 20 books per month. I'm an audible reader. Like, I love the audible I'm going to give books. you a hack. I learned this from Alex Hermosi. Get the audio book and get the physical book. Listen to the audio book and read the physical book at the same time. Okay. You would be astounded as to one how much you get done, two, how much you reinforce that learning. When I, when I got that gem from Alex, it changed my... Dude, I can read a book in a day now. That's awesome. Ridiculous. Wow. If the average CEO... Yeah. If the average CEO reads about 50 books a year, 54 books a year, well, I don't want to be an average CEO. How do I become the best? Consume more, learn more, outwork outperform everybody else and that, that, that that's the truth you know that and I, I fear that a lot of people just for like a lot of people don't have that group of friends that you know think it's you know it's like oh well we could go do this and you're like, oh, i'm gonna you know i got some reading to do well you're the you're the nerd you're the corny one you're not fun you know and in reality it, it's it's what 98 to 2 the rich to the poor? Yeah. 98% yeah. of the people around you, 98% of the people around you are bound to fail. So when you're sitting there thinking like, you know what, let me take this person's advice or let me go do what this person wants to do for the day. When you know inside that you're not fulfilled right now, you're not happy with where you are in life, 
you're going to lose. Mm. It's Labor Day weekend. How many people this weekend are going for the loss? Mm. While there's other people that are sitting there taking an opportunity like we are right now mm. to get a win. Yeah, and shout out to the people on live. Because we, we're live, yeah, right? Yeah, we're yeah live. shout out to y'all on live. Why? You could have been anywhere right now, anywhere, but you are tuned in because you know there is a purpose for you. And being surrounded with people on the same mission as you. Do you ever see lions hunt with hyenas? Absolutely no. not. Lions hunt with lions. Eagles fly with eagles. Why am I an eagle and I'm going to come down here to have a conversation with a pigeon? It don't make no sense. We see different things. A tree starts in the ground, the same place the grass starts. But I guarantee you where that tree ends up and finish. And the view that tree has is different from what the grass sees. Mm. When you have these dreams, when you have these visions... Earlier, I spoke about being planted in the right environment. If we know it is not conducive to our growth, we need to remove ourselves. It is okay to let people go. For your growth, for your survival, for your generational wealth, you will not finish with everybody you start with. You will lose people along the way. And guess what? It's okay. Be selfish. It's okay. It's okay to say no. And for a lot of people, their fear, especially for the younger generation, their fear to leave these people is losing their clout. You know, losing their popularity. You, everybody wants to be popular mm -hmm. more than they want to be rich. Well, many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. So if you want to be called and be called with everybody else, by all means, go ahead. That's more money that I can make Absolutely. if you don't want to come over here and make some. Responsibility, right? And accountability. People need to be accountable that every decision that they have made in their life led to where you are now. Own your truth. Own your own truth so no one can use it against you. If you are broke, it's because you want to be broke. You're around broke people. You are not consuming anything that pushes the needle forward. I guarantee you this. Change the people you're around. Start reading books that bring you information and pushes your needle towards your three five or ten year plan, and you will see what can happen in six months to a year in your life. It will completely change. People don't even read one book a year. And if you are reading four books a month, you are ahead of the game. Some people want to be average. It's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Go be average. But I was made in the image and likeness of a creator that told me this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if I believe I can, I can. If I believe I cannot, I cannot. Either way, you are both right. Which one are you going to feed? Abundance or scarcity? I want abundance. Absolutely. I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. I want to set up the next 10 generations of the Levantes so they are financially set. I cannot do what regular people are doing. It is not going to move my dreams in the direction I want it to go. So sometimes it's okay. You got to let some people go. Facts. So, so um, Mr. Delavante, did I say it right? Yes. Okay. You did. <laughs> so, how do you help your clients to develop a strategy so that way they can rep prepare their credit long term? Mm -hmm. So, bad credit is a mindset, and it's a mindset of the way people think. The way you think is the way you handle your finances. Mind you, the few that, you know, life happens. So, when life does happen, right? But it's not how you fall, it's how you get up. If you can look up, you can get up. Get 
up. Stop being a victim. Like, mm -hmm. stop it. Shit's not cute. Stop it. Take responsibility for where you are. I bet my credit is messed up. Your current credit situation does not define your financial reality. So, okay, cool, Duran. Now I know that. What do I need to do? Lock in. You need to learn what you need to learn so you can go ahead. And what does that mean? You need to consume things. You need to get mentors, join programs, join universities, join masterminds. And where credit is concerned, dude, if they go over to Duran Delevante right now on YouTube, my free content is better than people's paid content. Mm. Start there, Duran. I don't got the money. It's okay. Everybody got $47, right? And I got a book, ebook out right now for $47 where all they got to do is text the word FICO, F-I-C-O. If they text the word FICO to 917-993-5238 for $47, you can learn how to start repairing, rebuilding, and restoring your own credit. The ebook has templates inside of it. Wow. But guess what? They're going to hear the information. They're going to hear text FICO to 917-993-5238. And guess what? Some of them are not even going to do it. And they're the same ones that have bad credit. It's free. YouTube. Type Doreen De Levante in. Go over to the channel. If you go over there, make sure you sub too. Don't play no games with me. <laughs> right? But the content that is there. People want a microwave fix and they don't want to invest nothing in it. They want something for nothing. It does not work that way, beloved. It's going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money. There is a cost. People are not willing to pay the cost. And those of us, like us in this room, that's willing to pay the cost, you will see that your bank accounts reflect different numbers than those that don't. And it's so crazy because they're so interested. Like I've known some people that will literally go to the store and pay $200 for a purse. And I'm talking about credit score of probably like damn near a three mm -hmm. instead, <laughs> instead of using maybe like 40 to $50 to invest in their credit. So that way they can make more money so they can get more things. So that's just wild to me that even with you saying that, like, that's just crazy that most people won't invest in $50 for an ebook to advance themselves. But it's by design, too. You got to think about the programming. Tell lie vision. Someone is telling lies, reprogramming your vision. Mm -hmm. Because now they're putting these, these drama shows, these, these housewives of whatever in front of you. And we are now in a society, we are in the age of the dumbing down of society mm -hmm. where the attention span of a person now is less than three seconds. And if the attention span is less than three seconds, how are you going to read a whole book, much less a page of a book? All these pictures, all we want to do is scroll, scroll, scroll. Stop. Just stop. Take a step back. Where do I want to be in three years? Write it down. Where do I want to be in five years? Write it down. Where do I want to be in 10 years? Okay, cool. What's going to get me to my three-year mark? What's going to get me to my five-year mark? What's going to get me to my 10-year mark? I wasn't born for money. I wasn't rich growing up. I was walking around barefoot. No shirt. Rips in my shorts. I own my own truth. So for any of you trolls online that want to talk about, oh, he's talking about money and he wasn't. Yeah, tell me something I don't know, bro. But guess what? I will outwork any of you any day. Because right now, when y'all are partying and going crazy, I am working. When you are asleep, I am working. When you are out partying, I am working. How much are you willing to invest in your own dream? I will sacrifice everything. Dude, I forgot to eat today. I have not ate all morning. I totally forgot. I am so consumed with success, I'd be forgetting to eat sometimes. You like Eric Thomas? Say again? Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is good. I listen to him from time to time. Yeah. It's, it's, you got that, 
that style in you that that you're preaching right now. I, I you know? appreciate it. Thank you very much. You know, for all the people out there that you know, there's there's a, a large group of people that won't pay the forty seven dollars because you and got you got say, you got to keep their bad credit. I, but you also have an keep industry, your bad credit. If but you, you also have an industry here that is oversaturated with a lot of people that do scam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so there are there are a lot of people that are just afraid of that. So how would you answer the critics? False that, that evidence appearing real. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. I am a real person. Do, just free, for free, go over to YouTube. And if my YouTube channel does not help you, let me know. There are people out there scamming people. You are a million percent correct. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you something. Are these people throwing conferences like the Credit Summit, September 29th, 30, and October 1st, that you can come to and learn in real time how to repair, rebuild, restore your own credit? Print your credit reports out. Bring it to the summit. Doreen, I got a collection. What do I do? In real time, letters and strategies. Success has receipts mm -hmm. people have a responsibility to do their due diligence go look somebody up go see how many people they're helping are they putting out my 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 mentor calls it um what does myron call it again community service content <laughs> that people can use if you can't give your best away for free, you don't know enough. That's true. That is why some people, when you ask them things, you will not get answers because they don't know enough. They are not true to what they are saying. Burner Boy says, I am real down to my skeleton. That is deep. That probably went over a lot of few people's head. It's cool, though. Mm -hmm. At what point do we hold the consumer accountable? So let me ask you with the with the package with the ebook, how long could if someone's studying it, reading it every day, mm -hmm. and you know applying it to their credit, mm -hmm. how long does it take for them to see results? All right. So when it comes to result, obviously it's going to vary by people, right? No one will ever could get the same result. When it comes to results, obviously, yeah. It's gonna so when it comes to results, it varies with everybody. Mm -hmm. So for anyone in this space to promise you that I'm going to get this done in this time is not true. Mm -hmm. You cannot predict how the consumer reporting agencies or these creditors are going to respond to you. Wow. And first of all, it is even against the law to make these promises. But what I can tell you for some things like, for, for example, and the law proves this, I can tell you that a bankruptcy can be deleted in four days. Why? Because the law says when you identify an account that came from identity theft, that's supposed to happen in four days. And I can prove without a shadow of a doubt that someone that is reporting a bankruptcy or a person, because a person also means a corporation, that information came as a result of identity theft. It is not what you know, it's what you can prove. I can prove that late payments does not exist on your consumer report. These are things that can be proven using consumer law. Can I say, oh, your late payment is going to get deleted in 30 days? No, I cannot. Mm -hmm. It might take you longer. It might take you a few rounds. God damn it, you might even have to take them to arbitration or sue them because some of them act stupid. And what people need to comprehend is this. If it was easy, everybody could do it. The things that are good, they are, it's not easy. It's not. It requires work. And the person that is dedicated to their success will always be the ones come out on top. During my five-day challenges, there's people that clean their whole credit profile in two or three days. Will that happen for everybody? No, it won't. There's people that got bankruptcy deleted in a day. Will it happen for everybody? No, it won't. Results vary, but not because you got pushback. It didn't mean the thing didn't work. It just simply means you got to stick with it a little bit more. But we are so accustomed to a three-second world. 
We are so accustomed to a three-second world that we now think everything's going to happen overnight. Bro, you just spent the last 25 and 30 years wrecking your credit. You think it's going to get fixed overnight? Mm -mm. Come on, let's be realistic here. So we got to set realistic expectation. It requires work. How many times do you come across the people? Because I've, you know, I know a, a few friends that were in the that are in the credit repair uh, industry, and how, how often are you running into people that get upset with you because it doesn't happen right away? Oh, there's there's a lot of people, and from the jump, I'm letting you know if you're coming here for an overnight fix, I am not your guy. Go find the dude mm -hmm. that's making those promises. Because at the end of the day, I'm letting you know what it is. And what it is is maybe you can get it in 30 days. Maybe you can get it sooner. Maybe you cannot. I cannot predict how these companies respond. I don't own them. So if this don't work for you, go find somebody else that's making the promises. Because I'm not going to be that dude. What I can promise you, I will teach you how to do it. That I can promise you. But you got to be intentional about your success and your results. Mm -hmm. Does a person have to really pay their medical bills? Define pay their medical bills. I'm just saying, like, if they ever went to, like, a hospital or maybe, like, some type of doctor's appointment and things like mm -hmm. that, and it goes into collection, do they have to pay it? Well, I'm not going to say anyone has to pay or don't pay an obligation. What I can tell you is 15 U.S.C. 1692 CC mm -hmm. says, in writing, a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. Mm -hmm. That is law. So I'm not going to say someone can or should or don't. Mm -hmm. The law says in writing, a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. I, I ain't paying them. 15 Six. U.S.C. 1692 <laughs> CC. That is what the law says. Now, when did you get into studying this? I uh, started 2020, got real good in 2021 after a year of studying. Like I said before, to be great, it requires time or money. So what I did was I spent both. I invested time and I invested money. Here I am, financially free. Wow. Now with your company, tell us a little about the company and how it began and how people can find you and, and just break it down for us. So what happened to me, I don't want it happening to anybody else. And... As crazy as it sounds, it happens every day, bro. So I do my best to spread the word and let people know that not because something happened to you or because you made a few mistakes, you had some late payments, you had bankruptcy, you got medical bills. Like It is not the end. Your current credit situation does not define your financial reality. So I want to help as much people as I can Change your zip codes. Dude, I'm tired of seeing payday loans in our community. I'm tired of seeing pawn shops. I'm tired of seeing check cash in place. All because our people lack the information to change their zip code. I'm tired of seeing fast food restaurants on every corner. Because they know you got two to three jobs. You cannot cook. Because you got to be on the go. So we're going to have these $1 and $2 specials that's going on. And we are poisoning ourselves and our kids with the fork. We are the biggest consumers. They know this. They spend millions and millions of dollars doing these market research. They know it. They know we are in the microwave era where people just want things like this. So let's give it to them. They're going to spend the money anyway. So when does it become... What's the word I want to use? Hmm. When do we hold people accountable? You are in charge of your own success because every decision you've made in your entire life led to where you are right now so it becomes what am i going to do will i become a victim my entire life and talk about the haves and how they are greedy 
or am I going to sit down, change the information that I consume, repair, rebuild, restore my own credit, redeem my life, redeem my finances, redeem my credit, change the trajectory of the wealth of our family, and then let us start studying what the rich does. Success leaves clues. It's not a secret. Rich people wrote so many books. But if you want to hide something from a person, you put it in a book because people don't read. Thinking is the hardest thing most people never do. So if we know they don't read and we put it in a book, the ones that are dedicated to their success are going to read. And these people are going to be the ones that separate themselves from the pack. It's about accountability. At what point do we hold ourselves accountable in regards to all the decisions that we have made and how those decisions lead to where we are right now. Absolutely. And it's, there's this block in a lot of people's minds that, that they don't want to admit that to themselves. They want to block it out and, you know, it's, oh, it's just going to get better. Life's going to change. You, you, there's too many people. Oh, it's cool. Keep thinking that. Yeah. Too many people every single Faith. day that says, you know what? Faith. Everything's going to be fine. Faith. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. You can hope and wish on a shooting star for everything you want. But if you do not put in the work and the intention behind getting what you want done, it will never happen. You do. You did not become successful by hoping and wishing. I am quite sure you had to invest time and money into developing this project. Absolutely. So why should people think that you just hope and pray for something and it's just going to fall out of the air and it's going to make your life great? No, 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 beloved. It don't work like that. Mm. It requires intention. It requires work. People don't want to put in the work. They want to make the multiple six figures. They want to make seven figures. Are you willing to become the person to make that type of income? Because I'm going to tell you this. Making five figures, making six figures, it's a different person you need to become to make seven figures. And then you need to become another person to make eight. Are you willing to reinvent yourself? Are you willing to discard everything you thought you knew? Because be ye renowned through a new mind. Are you willing to, to install a new mind, new beliefs, new ideas, new dreams? Some people will say, you know, um, the sky is the limit. There is no limit on the sky. You got to hit that dome first, but we won't get into that part. Yeah. There is no limit to your imagination. The limitation mm. in life for people are limitations that they put on themselves because of the capacity to which they, their mind can stretch. A mind that is stretched beyond its capabilities can never go back to being the same. What is one success story um, of a person that you've worked with? Like, what is something that was, like, outstanding just to see, you know, their experience in fixing their credit? All right. Um, I had this one student. She's still in the program. Um, so she came in. I'm not going to call her name here. Um, she came in the program. She's a nurse. Mm -hmm. And she lived in an apartment. She has three kids. Um, it was a two-bedroom, and all the kids were in one room. She and the spouse was in another. And they needed a home. She had three late payments, two collections, and a medical collection. She joined the program in January, and by March, she got all those negative items deleted. And by, I believe, April, she FaceTimed. And we were on our, no, she, she, she didn't FaceTime. We were on our Sunday call because we do Sunday and Monday mentorship call. Mm -hmm. And she opened up the camera. She raised her hand to speak. And she was walking through a house with all the kids. And she said, the rain, we just closed on our home. Wow. All the kids got their own room now. All the kids are happy. They were running around in the house. They got a huge backyard. She 
was be, she was so intentional about what she wanted for her family mm. that she put in the work. She got the results. They closed on their first home. And now sh- in the program, now she's learning how to repair, rebuild, and restore other people's credit, credit so she can now change the lives of other moms that was just like her. Mm. And someone, um, some more advice, someone that doesn't really have a good credit score or somebody that's probably new with credit, it could probably be somebody that just graduated from college or mm-hmm. just graduated from high school and they decided they didn't want to go the route of, um, you know, a regular job and education, right? Mm-hmm. What is some advice that you would give to someone um, that's trying to start a business, doesn't really have good credit like that, but they need a loan in order to start their business? Um, in all honesty, I'm going to say get a job. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I want you to get a job is you need something that can take care of you, right? So have something that's paying the bills and make sure that food's on the table. Because mm-hmm. there's no prediction being a business owner or an entrepreneur when you're going to start making money. Um, in the meantime, while you're on that job, start studying stock options, right? Because whether the market goes up and down, you can make money. Mm-hmm. Stock options trading, start learning that. That takes no time. Or if you want to learn e-commerce, there's so many ways. Just have some income coming in. Then now the income you're going to use now to get mentors. You're going to find mentors that is doing what you want to do. And then you're going to pay that mentor how to teach you how to do what you want to do. And the shortcut to success is called mentorship. It is not a secret. It is called mentorship. I had a mentor, um, he's still my mentor, so I won't say had, I have a mentor, and that mentor, to, to, to be in that level of mentorship, it's 155000 per year, see, and a lot of people are going to say, wow, oh my God, Doreen, I would never pay anybody that, I've seen my mentor closed $5 million in 27 minutes on the stage, that's what some people will never see in their entire life. He just closed in 27 minutes. I've seen my mentor teach other people how to do a million dollars in a day. He got receipts for days. 155000 is nothing to learn a skill that can command an income of one to five million dollars in a day. Who are we getting our information from? Does there exist receipts from this program? Are we willing to do the work and hold ourselves accountable? We are a sum total of all the decisions we've made. We are all self-made, but only the rich will admit it. What advice do you have for the individuals that this is happening every single day, every hour, every minute, that are walking into car dealerships, they need a car, looking for a car, they don't have the amount of credit to get it at this time? Hmm. It's important. Everybody would reach out for credit repair, Mm -hmm. and they want it. You know, they want that done tomorrow. I need the car tomorrow. So you need to fix my credit today because I need the car tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So what type of advice do you give those people that walk into the dealership? And if you had the opportunity to stop them in their tracks and say, hey, before you do this. I'm going to say good luck, bro, because if you want it tomorrow, there's nothing I can do. The Mm -hmm. thing, it takes time. And if you're not willing to put the time in, go find somebody else. Where do you start? The place where you start is your mind. Let's be realistic. You didn't know just today you needed a car tomorrow. You didn't know it. You didn't know today you needed a house next month. You knew it. Let's start putting the things in place. So if my credit is bad right now, and I'm giving myself in my three-year and my five and my 10-year plan that, okay, in 10 months, I need a home. Well, let me start repairing my credit now. So in 10 months' time, the probability of me getting ready has astronomically increased. We are waiting last minute to get things done. 
Because everybody want things fast. You didn't just know yesterday. So work on the mindset of being realistic. That's number one. Number two, what do I need to learn in order to get me to where I want to go? I need a car. Okay, what does my credit report look like? Let me go take a look at it. Let me go clean up my personal information. Where are they the, going for that? Freecreditscore.com? No, no. So there's annualcreditreport.com. Okay. It's a government website. They can go there. They can get their consumer reports. There's not a score attached to it because the credit score is not a part of your consumer report. That exists independently. So from Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, you'll get the report. Go through the report. Some people don't even want to read their own credit reports. There's only so much you can do if people aren't willing to help themselves. You can bring a horse to the water. You cannot force it to drink. At what point do we hold people accountable? It's a two-way street. It requires work on your end too. Not just the person <coughs> that is teaching you. Not just the person that's repairing the credit. Mm -hmm. It requires a level of participation from the consumer. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to go into the car dealership. Let's figure out what's on your credit. Let's get those items deleted. If you're going to go, go have a conversation with the sales manager. What do I need to be qualified for this with this payment? Um, this is what my credit looks like. All right, maybe you need to get all of these stuff deleted. Go in and talk to them. Don't be pressured into buying anything now. If you know your credit is bad, dude, chances are you're going to get got because you are going to get tied up in a subprime loan. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make sense for you to pay 20, 25, and 30% in interest, leave it alone. We got to learn how to leave things alone. Some things you're not ready for. Do you have a child? Yes. All right. You got a car? Yes. All right. How old is your kid? Uh, 16 months. 16 months, okay. And I got another one on the way. All right, cool. What type of car do you got? I got a GLE 63S. All right, cool. Would you give your 16-month-old the keys to your car to go to Walmart and pick up some groceries? No. All right, why not? <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> common sense. Fast forward. Yeah. Kid is 20 years old. Same kid, your kid. At that time, would you give the kid the car with the keys? Being that the kid now has been trained, they know how to drive, they got a license, and are responsible. Would you give them the keys to go to Walmart? Absolutely. And go get groceries. What's the difference? The education. The education. Mm. Sometimes when we get our blessings too soon, it can destroy us. We need to recognize that sometimes we just need to wait. Same kid, same car. But if you get your blessings too soon, it can be detrimental to your life. Absolutely. We need to exercise tactical patience. And these are all things that we can learn from going to your program or signing up for your program. Absolutely. How does one find your program and sign up for it? So for everybody that's listening right now, you can text the word university. U-N-I-V-E-R-S-I-T-Y. Text the word university to 917-993-5238. I'm also going to send you the links too, so you can drop it in the description. Mm -hmm. My Instagram, Darain Delevante. D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E. -E -E -E. Go to Instagram. You can find me there. The Credit Summit. This is coming up, right? Come to Atlanta, print your credit reports out. In real time, I am telling you, you can get strategies from professionals that you can use to delete items off of your credit. The era of I don't know, it doesn't fly anymore. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. If you are lazy, please do not attend my seminar. Don't come to the credit summit. This is only for people 
that are serious, whether you're a consumer, whether you're a credit repair business owner, this is a family event. If you are serious about changing your zip code and changing the credit dynamics of your family, this is for you. Show up. Because if you show up, I will do my best to make sure you get the information you need to be great. And what are the requirements to show up? Get a ticket. Um, we're going to have a link below, so I'll shoot that over to you. Okay. They can get your tickets right here. They can, so, the t so the ticket for the... The credit program, summit, yeah. yeah. How much is it? Um, the, there's different levels. So there's general admission, there's VIP, and then there is um, ultra. Like You can just get everything, join the program, runs away. Because once you join my university, all my conferences, you are VIP. You get free tickets. Right, and to join the university, being a part of the, the, the university, all they gotta do is text the word university to 917-993-5238, but it goes back to how many people are intentional about their success, how many people are intentional about changing their lives, how many people are intentional about saying, I have had enough, with bad credit, I am tired of seeing check cashing places. I am tired of these pawn shops. I am tired of being taken advantage of. Bad credit is an expensive life. How do I know? I have lived it. Double digits on interest rates. I will not do that again. I'm not. I refuse. I refuse to be a common man. I refuse to be mediocre. I refuse to be average. What are some, what is, a, what is a legal advice that you can give someone that's attempting to, I guess, do their credit by themselves? Like, is there something that they should be concerned by or can a person fix their credit by themselves? So first of all, I cannot give legal advice because mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. But what I can tell you is this. The law says any consumer have the right to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit, to delete any negative item from their credit. This is law. Anyone listening to this right now, you can repair, rebuild, and restore your own credit by yourself. It requires you learning the skills learning the laws, and believing that it is possible for me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. People need to believe that they can achieve financial success, credit success, but before any of that happens, it starts in the mind of a person. The mind is the most powerful thing the human possesses because everything that we have and we use was birth in the mind of someone. And then something else we were uh, discussing earlier, uh, be before I let you go, because I know you got a lot of important things to do, um, is people protecting themselves legally. Mm. And, you know, because there's a lot of uh, situations that occur. Uh, you know, I was dealing with this with something in, in my family um, just yesterday. And, you know, a lot of people aren't equipped with the proper team around them. Mm -hmm. And you were giving somebody advice today about Legal Shield. So talk to me about that and the so, importance of it. Um, what we do with credit, it's important that representation is important, right? And um, to get in a consult with a lawyer these days, it's anywhere from three to five hundred. Um, so I had a conversation with a senior executive at Legal Shield, a senior associate, and I talked to them and I let them know what I do, and I would like to bring that into my community, where for like twenty nine dollars a month they have access twenty four seven to legal. So the the incident that happened. With, with, with anyone, you get pulled over. And, and first of all, you gotta, there's a thing called the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent, right? Well, you don't have to say nothing. I need to speak to my lawyer. And for $29 a month, if you got a family plan 
What that can do is you can put 10 people on the family plan and that covers them, right? That is the difference between someone spending a weekend in jail or someone going to that station and coming out in a few hours. Le because we do not have legal representation and life insurances, a lot of things happen to us. But I guarantee if we start getting life insurances, whether whole life or IULs, the game changes. And if we start getting representation, the game changes. What are successful people doing? They have life insurance policies. They have legal protection. They are protecting themselves, their families, their assets, and their businesses. We need to do the same. So I'll send you all the links. Um, the links will be in the description. Um, they can go check the stuff out. Um, the Credit Summit, September 29th, September 30th, and um, October 1st. It's going to be huge, bro. It's for us. This is ours. This belongs to us. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yeah. I appreciate you greatly for thank coming you, up thank here. You, thank you. Uh, I, we're definitely going to be in contact. Yep. I always like to let people know that the Danza Project is really not a podcast. It's a network. Um, and obviously, I, I'm going to keep speaking to my network. That's amazing. And making sure that if any of them need any help, we got the phone number again, the text. Yeah, yeah. So, um, university, text the word university to 917-993-5238. And let's get connected. Let's work. Absolutely. And the website for them to find you? Uh, DoraineDelevante.com. I made it so easy. It's okay. my name. D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E.com. Just go to DoraineDelevante.com. I'm very Googleable. Go find me. Yeah. I am a real person. <laughs> it's the smoothest name in the world. <laughs> it's Dorraine Delevante. I appreciate you, Queen. As always, yep. Orlando, I appreciate you. Mr. Delavante, you're the Thank man. You. I appreciate all Thank the advice and gems. And, let, you know, let's move forward. Let's get that day going. It's, yeah, let's it's Labor Day, everybody. I hope you enjoy your holidays. And remember, educate yourself. Stop spending all that money where you don't need to spend it. Facts. Also, I do want to leave it with this. Stop telling people that, you know, I'm just waiting. Oh, God's got me. It's God's plan. It's your plan, too. You need to take advantage of the time that you have here on this planet, too. Let's sign out.